Well, it's probably been a little over 24 hours since I put the vinegar in the block. And I have my catch pan rinsed out real good. We're going to see if we get some of the lime deposits out of the block. I'm going to pour the vinegar off in, back into one of my jugs of the funnel and then I'm going to rinse out with water. I'm going to rinse it out real good again. I don't know how much you can see in there, but it looks pretty darn clean. I'm happy with it. Well, I finished taking the valves out of the head and I removed the exhaust guides for number two and three that's what's left them because the exhaust guide on number three was also broke and if you see this is the end of the guide that would go into the not the combustion chamber the exhaust runner from the valve going to the manifold and that was all corroded off besides it being broke on the other end and I've I don't know if you can see it, but if you compare the exhaust to the intake on number, that's number four, and that's number one, uh, the end of the guide is gone on those two, this end of the guide. So I'm going to replace all four exhaust guides. Originally, I wasn't going to take the manifold off, but when I was in the house, ordering parts, I thought for $14 I'd order a manifold gasket and take the manifold off to make the head easier to deal with it. But now looking, after looking at it closer, I decided I am going to leave the manifold on even though it's harder to deal with because if I would end up with an issue with those bolts rusted into the manifold, I might be opening up a big can of worms by trying to remove it. I know it'll be harder to deal with the head with it on, but I don't want to open up another can of worms. And if you look here, I've read that some would have a two-bolt carb and some would have a three. Well, I have a three-bolt carb, and apparently this manifold is modified for a three-bolt carb. So I don't know which would be earlier or later, but 
this is what I have. And back to the residue from the last rinsing. This is from my last rinsing. I'd say four to five tablespoons full of residue. And you can see some of the lime deposits and stuff there. So this is as much cleaning in the block as I'm going to do. I'm happy with it. And it's the next day now after it has dried some. And now you can clearly see where all the lime has come off on the liners in places and where there's some lime left. I think I'm going to fill it and let it soak another day or two. Because I'm at this point, I might as well try and get it as clean as I can, although I think it would be fine right now. Now just look at the scale that's in the water jacket. Granted, it probably would broke loose and fell to one corner while I was tipping it. But still, how much more do you think is in there that would come loose? So, I bolted the water manifold on the top of the head and plugged the end of it. And now I'm going to fill it up with vinegar and I'm going to set, let it soak for at least a couple of days. I got my 36 Ford started and brought around here, the one with the boom on the back. I'm going to use that for lifting the radiator off. I'm going to use it for putting the head on when I get that far because it's just too much to wrestle with by hand, especially with the manifolds on it. Now, earlier this year, you saw me working on the fuel pump on this truck. Uh, I first got this running, I don't know, 20 years ago or longer. And at that time, everything worked good with the six volt system. And it even charged at that time, but with the original wiring. But as you can see, the wiring has really deteriorated in the last 20 years, even more so than what it was. I've just been getting by by having a jumper wire from the coil that I would just clip right on the battery. And then I would hook a jumper cable right on the starter and touch the battery to start it. But I want to try and get a little more user friendly now. I've also been starting it with 12 volt, seeing all the other wiring is disconnected. It just starts so quickly on 12. I mean, that's the, the original coil. This would have been the original coil. And that failed shortly after I got the truck running years ago. And me, not wanting to spend money, I went in there and took the old coil out of it, drilled holes in it, ran a coil wire up to another, an external coil, and got that wired in. So now, to get it more user friendly again, I'm going to try and get the ignition switch wired in again and get the starter button working again. So I'm going to bypass the original harness completely. Well, well, let's see if it works. Switch, starter button. Well, we're going to give it some chalk. That makes it a lot easier to live with. Now this is the hand throttle and this is the choke. A couple years of wear there and they don't stay in position. And 50 years ago, Alan came up with a solution to that, and I'm going to duplicate it now. And it involves a piece of rubber from an inner tube and a scissors. And voila. Now with the tension on it, it keeps them in place. So we're all set to go again. Let's see if the truck will start up now and line it up for pulling the radiator.
Now I gotta raise the boom. That looks to be lined up quite good. Tomorrow morning I'll get it removing the radiator, filling it with vinegar to soak a couple days, and with it removed I'll be able to uh, tip it back and forth and get it rinsed out a lot better than if I wouldn't remove it. So that's it for today.